Welcome everyone to our channel under light blue disguise. Today we are going to be looking at a relatively unknown telescope brand based in Poland, Taurus Telescopes. Specifically, we will be talking about how to assemble their T300 Dobsonium model. First of all, quick disclaimer, we are not affiliated in any way to this telescope brand or any other brand which may be mentioned or seen during this video. The telescope and all the accessories that you will be seeing have been purchased with our own money. We have not received any compensation or incentive for producing this video. With this out of the way, let's start providing an overview of this particular model. The T300 is a 12-inch reflector on a Dobsonian mount with a truss tube structure and, as an optional accessory, altitude and azimuth encoders for its digital setting circle system, allowing us to use the telescope as a push-to system for locating objects in the sky. We will be making another video on how to use this system in the near future. The focal length of this telescope is 1500mm, so with an aperture of 305mm, it is an F5 scope. It comes with a Crayford style dual speed focuser as a standard. However, it does not come with any finder scope by default. You can order it separately or use one of your taste, as it comes with a pretty standard dovetail attachment. The brand is offering this model as a entry level. They produce much larger apertures, up to 24 inches, or even custom models up to 30 inches, at the time of recording this video. Additionally, they offer two different mirror qualities, standard and professional, which differ in terms of reflective capacity and accuracy of the mirror's parabola. Let's go ahead now and briefly describe the main parts of this telescope, and then we will begin the assembly of this particular model. In this image, you will be able to see on the top left corner the secondary mirror cell, with a dual speed focuser for your eyepieces, and the finder scope. In this case, we have already attached our own red dot finder. The secondary mirror sits within a three bane spider, with very thin legs that are making small, though beautiful, six point diffraction spikes on bright stars. The mirror holder has three adjustable screws, which are very easy to manipulate by hand without any other tools during confirmation. The telescope is also provided with a black nylon cover to protect the mirrors from dust as well as preventing unwanted stray light reaching the primary mirror. To hold the secondary mirror structure in place, we have a set of aluminum alloy foldable poles, with bottom screws set at a 90 degrees angle for easy attachment to the primary cell by hand. The screws have also a non-dropping mechanism, so they will always remain fixed to these poles. Altitude movement is performed thanks to arc-shaped bearings with teflon sliders that go on the sides of the primary mirror assembly and are reinforced with a horizontal bar at the, at the other end. The most important part of an reflector telescope is, of course, the primary mirror. It is placed into a wooden and aluminum alloy structure floating on top of nine adjustment points in the back. A very handy feature is that the three collimation screws are accessible from the top of the assembly. The mirror itself is protected from dust and any damage by a wooden cover. We strongly recommend to keep it in place at all times and remove it only when you're fully ready to go observing. Lastly, the base structure to hold everything in place is made of wood and aluminum. It will hold the altitude bearings as well as the vertical bar which supports the altitude encoder for the optional push to system. The entire setup is actually very lightweight for its size, weighing in an about 15.9 kg or 35 pounds. When pointing the telescope at the zenith, eyepiece height is 140 cm or 55 inches. The telescope is self-balanced for eyepieces of up to 1 or 2 kg in weight, with optional counterweights for bigger eyepieces. Let's go ahead now and start the assembly of the telescope. We will begin by attaching the altitude bearings to the primary mirror assembly, along with the horizontal bar for strengthening the structure.
Once it's secure, the whole assembly is put on top of the base. If you have the option of push to system, be sure to double check that the magnet used to attach the altitude encoder is positioned on the correct side. Make sure that the mirror assembly can freely rotate in both axes smoothly. Now we will spread the truss tubes and screw them into a mirror assembly. Don't tighten any of the screws too much during the whole assembly. Remember that the telescope is made of wood and you will want it to last for several years. Now it is the right time for extending the straight light cover and pull it down covering the truss tubes. Don't worry, you will set it up properly once everything else is in place. As you can see, it is preventing light from coming through even in broad daylight. Once this is done, we will grab the secondary mirror structure and set it on top of the truss tubes, then screw it in as well. Bear in mind that the eyepiece holder with the focuser should go on the left hand side of the telescope. Now you can extend the nylon cover to reach both ends of the telescope, stretch the adjusting strings and your basic telescope is set up and ready for observation. If you have purchased the optional push to encoder system, like we did, you will now need to attach the altitude encoder bar to the primary mirror structure. Connect the magnet to the altitude bearing, connect the wire from the base encoder to the right ascension plug and finally the one from the altitude encoder to the declination plug. Congratulations, you are now ready to go and start observing with this beautiful piece of kit. Remember that there will be another video detailing the usage of the optional push to encoder system for your reference. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.